Hello and welcome to the new Sunday Day podcast. It's been away for some time, but we're back. Uh, back for a special event as well. Cage is the trilogy, uh, the biggest domestic event in MMA for God knows how long. It's back. It starts Thursday, running through till Saturday night. Cage was 114, Cage was 115, Cage was 116. I'm your host, Kieran. Uh, tonight I'm joined by uh, my fellow Spyrite right fan, uh, young upcoming journalist, Charlie Walden. Charlie, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, happy to be on. Uh, happy to talk about some facts as well. Nice one, man. Thank you for joining us. And of course, we had to bring him on as well. New Summer podcast regular, uh, fan favourite, John Prentice. John, how you doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. It's good to be back and talking about some fights and, and fights other than UFC events as well, man. Cage Warriors is back and I can't wait. Oh, yeah. We, we all love a bit of Cage Warriors. One of the best breeding grounds in, in Europe for breeding talent. We've seen that on Fight Island in the last spell. We'll see it again in the, the next spell of Fight Island events. And of course, Definitely. we're in association with MMA Play 365. Make sure you go check those out to, get, to make sure you get the edge in MMA betting. So, lads, I think we're going to break it down with the biggest fight of the, of the three cards. Uh, Mason Jones going to become, or well, trying to become a double, double weight champion like Conor McGregor in Cage Warriors. Uh, going to take the welterweight title uh, that's currently vacant. Uh, vac- vacant. He's taking on uh, Adam Proctor. Adam is... Uh, one of the best fighters in the UK, 12 and 1 record. I mean, Charlie, how big is this fight? Huge, it's huge. Fair play to Mason Jones for stepping up as well because he needs to do a two little fight and go straight to UFC. He took the big one, Adam Proctor. It's a tough fight, they're both great everywhere they go. I think Adam Proctor had the advantage in the rest of the Jiu Jitsu, but on the feet, I think Mason Jones outstrikes him. It's a good fight, though, massive fight. Yeah, John, we've seen that, you know, Mason is a very talented. Uh, very well, very very talented fighter, especially on the feet. We also know he's, got a, he's, he's very well rounded. Three submissions, three KOs, and three decision wins. I mean, is it as simple as he goes up to the welterweight class and takes that belt too, or is he going to have a bit more of a test against uh, Proctor? I think he's going to have a big test in this fight. I think um, I think Proctor's a very good fighter. Um, I mean, he's a quiet guy. I've, I've interviewed him before, after he fought up at uh, ACB. He's a quiet lad. He's not one of those kind of guys that you see their name thrown out there all the time. I mean, Mason Jones is kind of a household name within domestic MMA cage warriors because of mainly his performances. He's not particularly outspoken himself either, but he's going up and he's fighting against a really good guy in Adam Potter now. Um, he's starting to become more popular with fans and, and more people are starting to hear the name Adam Potter because of his performances in the cage. But um, for me, this is a tough test. Like you say, I think I think Mason Jones will... I think he'll have that speed advantage in the striking department. But Adam Proctor's long, he's big, and, and he fights very... He's got very high fight IQ. He trains with some good guys up there at um, SBG up north. And um, he, he, his coach is uh, Alex Enland, I believe, is his, uh, his, his main coach. Um, they, they've got him really well drilled. And I think this is going to be a very difficult fight for Mason Jones. But... I also think it's a very clever fight because obviously his path that he wants to take is to the UFC. Um, for me, this is a bit of a no-lose situation because uh, we know he's already the, the lightweight um, title holder. He's going up to welterweight. If he loses, will that have much of an impact on his um, potential move over to the UFC? I don't think so because it's not his normal weight class. So for me, I think it's um, it's a it's a very good bit of business for Mason Jones. It's a bit of a no-lose situation for him, but. Don't be surprised at all to see both these guys in the UFC very soon because they're both very, very talented fighters. Yeah, John, you mentioned there, you know, not to not be surprised if both men go to the UFC. Is this a scenario where the winner of this fight gets an automatic UFC contract or do you think both men will have to stay in the in cage just a little bit longer, just while the Angorian scenario surrounding COVID and uh, corpse is going on? Or is it a straight, you win this fight, you're into the big, you're into the big leagues? I, th- I think for me, I think Mason wins the fight. He's he's in the big league. For me, Adam, if he wins the fight, I think he has another fight or two. Obviously, that depends on the COVID situation, how long this goes on for, whether we're going to... There's talk of us being locked down again, so we don't know what restrictions are going to be in place. But if things stay as they are and there's the freedom of movement around for, for fighters to go and fight in America, go and fight on Fight Island, etc., I think Mason wins. I think he gets the call-up. Adam wins. I think he needs a title defence or two before um, before the USC can call him. Yeah, uh, John mentioned yeah. there briefly, Charlie, that uh, obviously the current ongoing COVID scenario that's affecting a lot of fights and a lot of uh, and a lot of fighters as well, gyms and stuff. However, we've got to mention that Cage is is managed to get government approval for this. They've got the event three events rubber stamped by the government. 
it's, it's the first time that a uh, UK MMA event has been approved by the government. Charlie, how big a step is that in terms of UK MMA? Because th- th- this is a first. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's re- really good. Obviously, it's in the American promotion to get it in, in, on the USA, but it's great for English promotion to get it as well. And this event, they put, I think they put on an event just before the lockdown happened as well, behind closed doors in Manchester, which is really good. So I think the stepping stone has been really, really been built since then. I think it's been an ongoing work by Graham Bowler. So, yeah, great, great work. And uh, what a fight. What, what fights have got to start kick off it as well. Yeah, nice. Uh, also, the co-main event for Cage Wars 116 is the one we've got to talk about. Morgan Charrier, a, a French fighter with a huge, huge fan base. I mean, it's astronomical. He's looking to take the vacant featherweight title uh, that was vacated after the champion moved moved to Bellator. He's taking on uh, he's taking on Max Koga. You know, again, a very experienced guy, twenty two and six and one. I mean, Charlie, who's taking this fight? I've got the more experience, Matt Goga. He's been there, he's done it. Uh, he's had a few slip ups where he's been knocked out, but uh, he's a pretty steady fighter. I think he's going to be a nice time welcome, but uh, I've got Max Goga in this one. Yeah, what about yourself, John? I mean, Charrier, he knocked out a former, uh, former champion, Dean Truman, in his last bout. I mean, does that not scream uh, champion to you? Um, possibly. He's a, he's, a, he's a really good fighter, and like you say, he's. Um... He's, he's fantastic promotion material because he has got such a huge following. I remember in Cage Warriors in Birmingham last year, there was, there was about 100, 150 French guys who came over and, and it was like a, a football stadium in there. Like the, just throughout every fight, not just Morgan Chariots, like throughout every fight, they were the only guys that you could hear um, waiting to see their guy come in there. And, um, and yeah, he got a fantastic finish over, over Dean Truman. Um, we have seen before um, the Soren back fight. Uh, obviously, he, he lost that uh, by decision, um, and and, and Soren back didn't look great in that fight either. But but still managed to to eke out the win. And it's going to be tough for him because Shari has got knockout power and he can hold it into the later rounds, as we saw with Dean Truman. But as Charlie said, um, Max has fought some tough guys. When you look at his record and some of the people that he's fought, he's fought Lance Palmer. He went to a decision over in PFL. Uh, Damien Lapulus as well. He's got a, a very good, um, very good career behind him. Uh, this guy's dangerous on the mat. His last two wins have come by Von Flew and rear naked choke, and uh, and I think it's going to be a tough one for, for Morgan Charrier. I think again, for me, this is a situation where if Morgan Charrier uh, wins his fight, I I think he could get the call up to the UFC. Um, I think a big event over in France soon. I think he'll be on the card. Um, if, if, if they do put a card on over there, I think he will be called up. He will be there. He's got the backing. He's got the support. But I think Max is going to put a little dent in those plans um, this week. And I think, uh, like Charlie, I think Max is going to take this fight. I mean, we've got to, we've got to look at the records here. Max Koga has 11 wins by submission. And Charrier's only stoppage loss is by submission. Is that where the weakness lies in this fight? I mean, for both of you, is is this a case of if Sherry gets taken down, he loses the fight, or is it a case of he could fight it off? Uh, no, I think sometimes we just get caught on the submissions. It happens. The better grapplers sometimes lose, or obviously the better grappling many wins. But so where it happens sometimes lose. Sometimes get caught in a bad position, mistakes are made. I think now if he goes to the mat, I think he's an experienced fellow. He's in fact because those are fights already. He's experienced enough on the mat to be safe in good positions. I think just because I've won some mission, it doesn't mean he's going to get subbed. Um, yeah, like I say, uh, you don't always have to be a bad grapple to get some mission to get subbed. Yeah, what about yourself, Tony? Is that, is that the case of, you know, he's not necessarily the back, worst grapple in the world, but it, again, it's a, Koga's obviously demonstrated that Matt is his proving ground. That's where he's the most comfortable. Yeah, as, uh, as Charlie said, it's it's not always the case of um, you've been submitted to, you, you're a bad grappler and, and you're going to get taken down and finished when uh, when you go up against good grapplers. Sometimes you do get caught. I think he'll be a lot more comfortable if this fight remains on the feet and he'll be doing everything he can to keep this fight on the feet. I think Max will be doing everything he can to get this fight to the ground. Um, but but yeah, I don't I don't think he's um, I don't think he's like massively um, disadvantaged uh, Charrier on the ground. I don't think it's kind of he's going up against the equivalent of a of a Damian Meyer kind of guy. Um, I just think it's a case where he, he could get caught. Max is he's good, he's sneaky on the ground, but um yeah, I don't think it's a it, I don't think it's a given by any uh, stretch of imagination. I don't think if he gets taken down he'll lose. Dean Truman's good on the ground, he's um he, he's a dangerous guy when it hits the mat. We saw that in the Aiden Lee fight and um and, and 
Morgan was pretty comfortable in in that uh, in that fight against Dean. And uh, like I said, I think he'll want to keep it standing. But if he goes to the ground, it'll be interesting. Let's put it that way. Yeah, nice one. So moving away from the Saturday fights, Friday night. What a fight for this main event. Jack Cartwright, again, in the main event. We, we all know about Jack Cartwright. He won the cage where his uh, bantamweight title in a, in a one-night tournament, knocking out two guys uh, in the first round. I mean, again, he's a, he's a gifted wrestler as well as a gifted grappler. I mean, Charlie, how excited are you to see Jack Cartwright back in there? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think Eric on my radar like, a few months ago, a friend of mine at the gym uh, told me to watch him, and uh, I watched him. But he is such a talent. I've seen so many a few of his fights now. Such a talent. I felt like he actually started in wrestling and he and he fell in love with striking. And I feel like it's so important when you've got that natural wrestling base where you're not worried on the feet to get taken down. Uh, it's so good. Uh, his boxing is brilliant. I love how he goes, he goes, he goes low and then he goes high. He, he makes things up really well. He's such a savage and I think with a win here, he goes to the UFC. Yeah, I mean, John, he's against, he's taking on Gerardo Fanny in his second defence of the belt. I mean, Fanny comes in, he's got, you know, a decent record, 9-1, and one, uh, 4K wins, 3 submission wins. I mean, is this the toughest test he's had? Because, I mean, Manuel Bilic wasn't exactly an easy fight, was it? Uh, it it's a tough test for him, for me personally. I'm not sure. I've, I've, um, I've, I've watched quite a bit of tape, actually, on, uh, on Gerardo Fanny once, um, once his fight was announced. And... And it's interesting because if you look at the guys that he's fought against, um, I don't want to take anything away from that record. I don't want to say he's got a padded record or anything like that. But um, when you look at some of the guys he's fought, uh, his last fight was a, a victory against the guy who was 11-5 and five at the time. But then he had a loss against a 5-0 and o guy by a triangle. But then you're looking at guys and they were 0-1, 1-0, 1-0, debut, 1-2, and 1-2. and two. Now, I know he's uh, himself he's, he's a relative newcomer. Um he, he's, I think he's nine and one at the moment. So he's only got ten fights in his professional career, but it's hard to it's hard to take a lot from those fights because of the level of competition. Like you say, Jack fought a tough guy in uh, Manuel Bilic in his last fight. He, he had about twenty fights on his uh, in his pro record at that time. Um, his fight before that, Kovacevic is again against the guy who's had um, over ten fights. I think he's had about thirteen fights at the time. Scott Malone, anyone who's on the knows anything about the, the UKC, knows that Scott Malone is a tough fighter. Uh, he put him away in the first round. Um, I think it's going to be a tough test because from what I've seen of Gerardo Fanny, he's, he's, he's a, an explosive guy. He's dangerous. He can win via knockout, as we saw in his last fight, or he can get submissions. Um, but for me, as Charlie said, Jack is he's really well rounded. He's got that wrestling base. He's got great boxing. Um, when he went into that one-night tournament, he was kind of the underdog and the bookies were ruling him out of it. But... I mean, he, he showed us all. We all ended up with egg on our face after that because he, he just blew through the competition. And uh, for me, I think Jack wins this fight. And I also think he gets the call-up to the UFC and a very well-deserved call-up at that. Yeah, you mentioned there, John, that quite a few of us but, uh, didn't back him in that tournament at all. We thought he was sort of... The, the, why would, the, the sort of talk around him was, why is he in this tournament? There are other guys that should be in this tournament. Anyway, but Absolutely. one of the guys that told me to keep an eye on him was is a local uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach, uh, Kev Taylor, fantastic uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach. He told me to keep an eye out on Jack and I said, ah, he's, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye out, you know, a bit of a wry smile on my face thinking, oh, you know, he's going to back his, back his guy. But then he had those two KOs, he took the belt. And I spoke to Kev the other day and he was like, oh, he wins this fight. It's an easy fight. He wins it. And then he goes to the UFC. Is Kev right twice on this one or is it a case of he has this fight and this fight's going to be a little bit tougher and we may be seeing him again in cage wars before he takes the inevitable move to the UFC. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> but I think that was pretty resounding. Yeah, I think that's right. I think he does win this fight. I um, I like the fact, actually, that in his last fight against Bilic, it went to a decision because people kind of said, oh, he's got knockout power in the early rounds, but has he got the gas tank? They were kind of questioning whether he could go um, the, the full distance in a tough, grueling fight. And, he proved us all um, proved to us all that he can do that in his last fight against Bilic. And, um, and yeah, I, I do think that if he gets the win in this fight, I think he's getting the caller. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll sort of move away from the title match just slightly. Uh, Adam Wilson, he was on the last cage race card as well. The same, uh, well, not the last cage race card, the first cage race card of the year in Manchester. Uh, on the same card as Jack, he got some mission win over Scott Malone, of course, the guy that Jack, uh, Jack knocked out to, on his way to win the title. Is that a fight that we want to see before these guys go to the UFC? Because, I mean, you've got the, you've got the natural Liverpool versus Manc rivalry there. You've got 
Adam Wilson is a fantastic uh, grappler, which showed against that sort of monkey spider crawl. I don't know what he'd, how he'd call it, but that <laughs> incredible back take ago over Scott Malone against Jack Cartwright, who's obviously a gifted wrestler and he's also got knockout power in his hands. So that gives us good stylist good stylist, stylistic matchup. Is that the fight to make before these guys go to the UFC or do you wait to both those guys go to the UFC and hope for the matchmakers there to make the fight for a British card? Uh, no, nah, I'd rather see him against the USB competition in fairness. Uh, I think against uh, Wilson, I think he controls him. He knocks him out on the feet. Uh, he take, stops, stops the takedowns and keeps the fight where he wants it. I mean, there's a lot of matchups to draft in the UFC and a lot more matchups think a lot of people want to see as well. You can build that Liverpool versus Manchester rivalry, but Competition-wise, I would rather see against some UFC fighters. Yeah, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in agreement. Yeah, I think um, if he wins this fight and he wins it emphatically, uh, I want to see him get tested against the guys in the UFC. I want to see where his level is. Um, that's a perfect backup plan if, if he doesn't get that call because, as people know, sometimes we we think they're definitely going to get the call up. We saw it with Jolly Herbert. He had to wait an age until he got the call up. And even after that, Kane Carrizosa win, he... I spoke to him a few couple of months after and he said he still hasn't heard anything. So there's no givens with this, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that's a, a fantastic matchup as, as a backup if, if he doesn't get the call up, but um, I want to see him go to the USC. I want to see what his level is. I want to see him against those, uh, those tough American wrestlers and, um, and, and those, those worldwide household names. So I, I think he's ready for it as well. Yeah. Nice one. I mean, there's another fight that I'm really excited to see on that card. Nasius Frederick is back, uh, eight and two record. Now he's a, he's just an absolute beast of a guy. I mean, seven KO wins, just an extraordinary fight. He had this two two brawls against uh, James Webb, which were just I, I think if you've not checked them out on Fight Pass yet, go do yourself a favor, go and check them out. They are the, the most exciting fights of the year in cage for, for me. And he's taking on another exciting fighter, uh, uh, Jamie Richardson, the young gun. He's a nine and five. He's got uh, KOs on his record. He's a very well rounded fighter. How excited are you guys to see this fight? No, I mean, I, this, is, this is my shout for fight, the fact that the best fight of all the cards in terms of both strikers are both in the swing, some level. Uh, I do have the fire that's actually winning this one. I think it's a bit more technical on the feet. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a great fight. It's, don't don't sleep on this fight for sure. It's going to be an awesome fight. I mean, John, he teamed a uh, local gym to you, Team Renegade, with the likes of Tom Breeze, Jai Herbert, a uh, good friend of the channel, Mozu Bear. I mean, are those the guys to be training with to, you know, get him to the UFC? I think so, yeah. And I think this is the time that Nathalys needs to make it to the UFC. He's 37 years old now. Um, he, he won the belt in <laughs> epic fashion against uh, against James Webb. It was, a, it was a crazy fight. Like you said, those two fights are crazy. Um, he's got ridiculous cardio. I mean, in the first James Webb so, uh, fight, we saw him taken down on a few occasions. Um, he gets back to his feet, no matter what he gets back to his feet. He's got no quitting him. Um, if he wasn't getting taken down, he was stopping the takedown to his tombstone pole drivers. It was just, he's just so entertaining, this guy. I mean, he, he swings heavy leather. You could see in that web fight that he kind of reached for a, a fourth gas tank because they were just throwing non-stop on the first bell. They looked like they were tiring. They came back, they got their second win. They looked like they were tiring again. And then just that flurry to win it. But Nathas is training with some absolute beasts at Team Renegade. As you said, Tom Breeze, head coach there. He's got Leon and Fabian Edwards. Um, they've got such good jiu-jitsu guys there. Um, he's ridiculously strong. He's just a, an absolute power unit. I mean, he can knock you out. He's got power in both hands. Um, I think he wins his fight against uh, Jamie Richardson. I think he finishes him. Um, and I do. I think he'll get the call up to the UFC as well. Um, I, I think we're going to see a, a bit of a flurry after this week in Cage Warriors of, of guys um, getting that call up. And like I said, I think now is the time that he has to do it. If he loses his fight, it's a big setback for him, like I said, at 37 years old. But um, but I'm, I fancy him to get the win. Yeah. To be fair, if he gets the win, I could actually see him going on to the Contender Series. It would be a perfect place to put him, actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 fantastic shout. Yeah, I mean, just to play devil's advocate a minute, Charlie obviously mentioned going to the contender series, but let's just say uh, Natalia wins this fight, he, he wins emphatically, but because of the current situation, that you know, the, the move isn't there to made to the UFC just yet because of you know, situations outside of his control. But you also have James Webster in Cage Warriors, and he's taking on a former UFC fighter, Craig White. I mean, if for whatever reason Natalia doesn't get taken to the UFC. Do we get Webb versus Frederick three in cage warriors uh, 
on, a, on a, another mega card because that for me, if we don't get the trilogy fight for me, that's that's gonna be a tad disappointing. Yeah, I think that fight makes sense. Um, makes a lot more sense than Wilson versus Carter for sure. So yeah, that fight makes more sense, and it sells as well. Look at the previous fights; it sells as a great fight, and I definitely buy that one. Yeah, I agree. I, th- I don't think um, I don't think there's any reason for them not to make that fight if um, if, if Webb is victorious against uh, against Craig White this week. Um, as Charlie said, the the fight sells. Um, we we know from past experience that these two guys are going to put on a show. There's no doubt about that. Sometimes matchmakers' worst nightmare is are these two styles going to put on an entertaining matchup? But we know for a fact that these two guys will. Um, given the fact that the first fight was a draw, there's that little bit of um, more a little bit more reason as to why they should have a third fight as well. Obviously, the task would have won both of them. I know he got those point deductions, so technically he could have won both of them. But um, if he would have won both of them, then maybe not. But given the fact that it's Natas one, draw one, maybe James could come up and, uh, and he wants to get a one in the column as well. Who knows? But yeah, that fight makes sense if um, if Natas wins and, and he doesn't get the quarter of the year. So. Yeah, I've still got to agree with that, guys, as well. I mean, You've only got to look as well. They don't have, at least have the best of relationships. Like they don't seem to like each other. I mean, the face-offs got very, very heated the last time they fought. I mean, th- for me, we've got to see that fight. I, I don't care when we see it. I just want to see it really, really badly. Uh, please, Graham Boylan, if you're listening, please, 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 Frederick versus Web Three, the four AD mangoes to the UFC. Uh, but also, again, another big fight we've got to talk about is Samir Fayadeen. Uh, He's defending his flyweight title against uh, Luke Shanks uh, on the first night of the trilogy. I mean, guys, how excited are you for this one? Samir Fedin, he has... Uh, I remember listening to Brad Wharton. Brad Wharton saying that uh, he'd obviously fought, because of the situation in France for the legality of MMA, uh, he'd fought in a lot of one-night tournaments and things like that. So, And he also knocked out uh, perennial title contender Sam Creasy to win the belt as well at Night of Champions last year. I mean... How excited were you guys to see uh, Fadi back up, back fighting? Yeah, very. He was a big underdog in that last fight against Chris. I think it was the biggest underdog on the whole card. He's a massive veteran. He's been fighting since, since like 2010. He's an absolute veteran. Um, again, it's one of those situations where I think he defeated Luke Shams pretty comfortably. He beat up, he beat up Sammy Creasley, who was a very good fighter. Finished Connor, um, Connor Higgler well previously, who was a good fighter as well. So, yeah, I have uh, some here in that one. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think he really showed his um, his levels in his last fight against uh, against Sam Creasy. Sam Creasy's um, a perennial um, title threat over here in in the UK, and, um, and and we've seen the the kind of level that he can fight at and he competes at, and he trains with some great guys. And uh, and yeah, he, he put him away in the third round um, last year. Really, kind of put his name out there. Um, and 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 I think he trains at a good team as well over at, um, MMA Factory and. Uh, I, I think he's going to put on a show and, and he's going to be kind of um, throwing his name out there to, to, to want to get the move to the uh, to the UFC. Whether it comes after this fight or whether we, we need to see another fight from him and, and defend the belt again, uh, I'm not sure. But um, but yeah, I fancy him over Luke Shanks in this one. Shanks has got some decent wins on his record. Uh, Pietro Menger in his, uh, in his last fight, he's a well-known household name, kind of hitting it. But um, I just don't quite think he's at the... Uh, the level of, uh, level of fighting yet, and uh, and I think he's uh, somebody is going to come out victorious. Yeah, I mean, I mean he makes, Luke, Luke Shanks makes us up well, but the is a veteran. He's, he's, he's pretty decent everywhere, and I don't think Shanks really has an advantage anywhere the fight goes. To be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've got to talk about Shanks briefly. I don't think it's, uh, we can't run that completely. I mean, he's got out of six wins, four have been finishes, three submissions, a KO win. I mean, is he? Could he be the underdog that beats the original underdog in fighting? I mean. It, for me, on paper, it looks, looks it definitely looks like a possibility. Yeah, yeah, of course, anyone can win. It's a fight, and anyone can win. Um, I just, I just don't see it happening. Honestly, in this one, I just feel like for me, it's solid everywhere where where it goes. Really, I think chance maybe to get him on the feet, but apart from that, I don't really see him get anything. And it's the fight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, nobody can be ruled out in this game. Um, we all, we've all watched the fights to know that. Um, that nobody is a, um, a, is guaranteed a victory, and um, <laughs> Shanks. I mean, I, th- I just personally think that this has perhaps come a little bit too soon for Shanks. I think he is possibly um, 
championship material a little bit later in his career. But I think this is a big step up um, for him. And I think it might just come a little bit too soon. I, I, but like I said, you cannot rule these guys out. You, no matter what weight class, no matter what level, there's, uh, it's a fist fight and, and you never know uh, what can happen. But, um, but for me, yeah, I just think it's come this little bit too soon for, um, for Shanks. And I think maybe if he had a couple more fights under his belt against... Um, against some other real tough veterans, um, then possibly things could be different. But, um, but yeah, I, I'd be putting my money on, uh, on Samir in this fight. Yeah. I mean, is this also a trick? Uh, if he was to defend the belt as well, is this cage for his ticket into the French market? We know uh, uh, MMA in France just became recently legal. Bellator already taken the step to go out there uh, next month. I mean, if Iodine defends, surely that, that and uh, Charrier sticks around for a little bit as well, surely that's the ticket for cage race to go in, you know, expand into the French market? Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of fighters that to go over there and sell for sure. Some good fights you put over there. And yet, it's, this is the time to express new markets, go to new places, take advantage of So, yeah, definitely we should see that. Uh, I, I think so, yeah, unless they already get snapped up by the UFC and they want to take their market over to uh, France. I think if... Um... If Sharia gets the win and uh, and Samir gets the win here, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And, and, and if the UFC made the decision next year when restrictions are lifted a little bit, make the decision to go over to France, I think these two guys make perfect sense of uh, for names to, to go on that card. So um, if I don't get called up to the UFC, I think uh, Mr. Boylan um, has the decision to make as to whether he wants to go and explore that new market. And it, and it makes sense because... Um, because I think Sharia could sell the place out about 10 times over anyway by himself, so... Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so obviously, title fights there. We've got five big title fights across the three nights. They're all looking, at, you know, fantastic. All very well matched. Looking to be fantastic fights. But we've also got some non-title fights that are happening as well. I mean, uh, just just to start, Ian Gary makes a return. Three uh, and prospect. One of you know, he's he's been referenced as the new Conor McGregor. I don't like using that phrase because he's nothing like Conor McGregor. He's got his own personality. He's got his own style. I mean, how excited are you guys to see Ian Gary back in there? Uh, one, one KO win, one submission, one, one decision win. He had an, an amazing 2019. I mean, you know, how, how big is his ceiling? How big, you know, you know, how how long can he go in this game? I'm a big fan of Ian Gary. He's, he's very good everywhere. Very good submission wise, both on the feet. He's got it all, he's got the charisma as well. He's got everything to be a very successful in his business. He keeps his head down, stays front, front line to the position what he's got. And he can go very far. It's going to be a big year for him if he stays active as well. Yeah, I think so as well. I, I think he's um, he, he's got all the the tools that you'd want for for someone to to have a good career in mixed martial arts. Um, he he can talk the talk as well. He's very charismatic. Uh, he's a very funny guy. I mean, if any of you follow him on social media, he's um, he's always get, uh, getting the laughs out of people. He's uh, and and that's that's a good thing because we know in this game it's not always about. Um, just the skills that you possess in mixed martial arts. It's also about how marketable you are, um, how you can sell a fight, uh, how much people want to see you fight. And I think people are, do want to tune in and see Ian Gary. Uh, I think he, he's a very likeable guy, so he'll get a lot of fans. Um, and, and he's a very skilled fighter uh, when he gets in there. So he's what I like to call a new breed of fighter who are just so well-rounded everywhere, so dangerous. Um, they kind of... I don't want to say jack of all trades, master of none, because they're almost kind of masters of all trades and uh, and, and don't really have um, very particular weaknesses. But uh, he's definitely, as his name, the future suggests, he, he's definitely one guy for the future to, to watch out for and, and to keep an eye out. Going up against a, a tough guy, George McManus, though, who's um, he's no slouch himself. Uh, very, very good uh, on the ground. Very good jiu-jitsu. We saw that against Josh Brandt in his last fight with the reverse triangle. Um, so he... he I don't want to take anything away from George because this is no uh, no walkover victory at all. But um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this fight. I think it's going to be really entertaining. Is this a case of he's the new golden boy for Cadres? I mean, Cadres had a few golden boys in the past. I mean, Jack Shaw's Jack Shaw's for a time before he left. Uh, Nathaniel Wood was obviously the, the guy that sold them the London show. She put them on a London bill. They sold out. I mean, is he? Paddy yeah, Paddy Pimblet as well in Liverpool, of course. I mean, is he the guy that is now? I mean, I mean, we've seen him reference to Conor McGregor before, and sort of like everyone says, "Oh, he's the next Conor McGregor." But is he probably the next best, next sort of the next biggest, next big Irish star? I suppose. I think it's a bit too soon to say, man. Too soon to have some a bit of competition. I would say, but uh, we have 
yeah, he's definitely got potential to be that, but at the minute, uh, no, because we're not seeing that much of him. Yeah, I agree. I, I, it's it's a little too soon, and um, and if people start going around calling the next big star, we can see how people can. Uh, I don't think Ian is the kind of guy who will let that pressure get to him, and and, and that weights it on his shoulders. But um, I certainly think Cage Warriors will be giving this guy a huge push. Um, like I said, he's very marketable, very likable guy, very talented guy. Um, he's a guy that can sell a market like Conor McGregor can. Don't want to use the reference as you said, but he is that kind of guy. Um, We've seen the, the kind of um, support that the Irish give their fighters as well. So, yeah, I think uh, I think Graham and the, the, the team over at Cage Warriors will be giving this guy a big push and uh, and I think it's a big future for him. Yeah. Now, another fighter I'd like to, to quite exactly see as well is George Smith, uh, a very high-level judoka. Uh, I've interviewed him a couple of times. I know, John, you've interviewed him a couple of times as well. How excited are you to see uh, him come back into the fold? And, he, you know, he's got, a, he's got a tough opponent. He's got a, a very experienced opponent, uh, you know, with six and six and one record. I mean, is how how many fights is he away now from a title fight? Not far, I don't think. I th- George Smith is a guy I think he's really talented and, and a guy, again, I think he's got the potential to to go to the UFC and, and be a top 15 calibre UFC um, competitor. I mean, um, like you said, we spoke to him a couple of times, um, each ourselves, and, and the guy's really got his head screwed on. He trains with a, a great team there in Manchester, um, Matt Inman and, 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 and the boys there. Um, and he's again, he, he's very similar to Ian Gary in the sense that he's a very well rounded fighter. We saw um, I mean, he probably is slightly better on the ground than he's um, than he's stand up at the moment. Um, I think three of his four wins of um, or, or four of his five wins have come by the way of um, of submission. Um, but but he's a guy who who has the potential to go a long way for me. Um, very well rounded, uh, very high IQ. Um, you, you can just tell that speaking to him, he's very switched on, very clued up. He knows all about the uh, marketing side of uh, of being a fighter as well, and, uh, and things like that. So, I, this guy is someone that I would put money on, saying, "Watch out for him in the UFC in, in three or four years' time," because I think he has the potential to to definitely make it. There. He's going up against a tough vet, like you say, in, uh, in Matt Barner. It's probably his biggest test to date. Um, but I think he, uh, I think he's going to pass this test, and uh, and if Natas does win and moves uh, moves on to the UFC, obviously that that frees up the belt, and it wouldn't surprise me if George gets a win, a convincing win. His name is thrown in and around that uh, that vacant middleweight title back, um, hat. So I don't think he's far away at all. Uh, maybe a little bit too soon, maybe another fight or two, but he's definitely uh, definitely closing in on that title fight. Yeah, Charlie, yeah. I mean, what are your, what are yeah, your thoughts so on Josh Smith? I, I agree. I think both these guys, sort of the guys that fight the guys, sort of think that you've seen Bonnie fought, fought like a Marco Madsen. I actually found out he fought Lerone Murphy, who's a fed weight at welterweight in the amateur days, which, which is crazy to think when you, when you look at it. He fought Bobby Parrott, who's obviously fought fighting in Bellator Milan, or France, or one of the two. But yeah, they're both, they're both good guys. I like Smith a lot. Um, good, got a good start. He's got a good gym at SPG in Manchester as well. Um, it's, two, it's two losses. I think he'll say himself with his, his mistakes once he won an amateur one in pro, but you look at his losses, they're against really good guys anyway. Um, I like I like his style a lot, and uh, I see him getting the win in this one. And like, like John says, he gets a pretty convincing win. I think you can probably see him splatting the title picture as well. Yeah, I mean, has he got to sort of wait around a little bit just for the title picture to sort himself out? Because obviously, uh, there's an entire situation. We don't know whether he's going to go to the UFC or get called maybe to go to Bellator as well. That's always an option. We've also got to see what's happening with uh, James Webb because I assume if he beats Craig White, he's probably in the title picture again. Is it a case of he's just got to sort of play the long game a little bit and just wait for situations outside his control to play out before he can then go and take the belt himself? I think this point, is, I think this this point is career and where he's at. I think from a pro out, love activity. I think James Webb is the same. Stay active. That'll get you his title shot. Yeah, I agree. I think he's probably, like I said, maybe a fight or two away from that, um, and especially if Natas doesn't get the call up to the UFC. But um, I think he'll be very frustrated, actually, this year, along with a lot of fighters, as you can understand. But um, when I spoke to him back end of last year, um, he said that he wanted to be very active, like you said, Charlie, this year, four or five fights. Um, he'll be frustrated that he hasn't been able to do that. Obviously, he fought on the... I think it was the last card before the lockdown, I think he fought. Uh, and obviously, he's right. fighting again this week. Um, so he's managed to get a couple of fights in, not as many as he'd like, but... Yeah, he's just got to, got to keep grinding, keep getting those fights in, three or four fights a year. Um, 
yeah, as a benchmark minimum, I think. And, and yeah, if he keeps getting those wins and keeps getting those impressive submissions, I think uh, you give the matchmakers no choice but to put you in title contention, do you? Yeah. Now, another fact we've got to mention is uh, Jake Hadley is making his debut. John, I know you're you're massively impressed with this guy and you, you, you sort of, you know, asked if we could include him on the podcast as well and sort of mention his fight. I mean, how excited are you to see him uh, make his cage for his debut and, you know, is he a guy that we need to be watching out for in the future? This guy is a guy that you need to watch out for in the future. I, 100%. Um, I, I may be being uh, slightly biased as he's, uh, he's local to me. Uh, I know him. I've, I used to train at UTC when he was there. He, used, he actually used to coach the... Um, he's 24 years old and he used to coach the uh, grappling and jiu-jitsu classes um, when I used to go. And it, that gym's been closed for about three years now. That tells you how good he was. He, the, the fact that he was coaching other people at like 20, 21 years of age. He's such a dangerous guy on the ground. He's got some of the best jiu-jitsu um, you will see regionally outside of USC Bellator he's got um <laughs> not one but two wins by Gogo Plata um <laughs> how many people can say that um yeah. he fought against really tough competition as well he's obviously the uh, ESC champion as well when he beat uh Kazumulo Zulu who's a really really good uh, stand-up striker we saw him in the ultimate fighter um he, he just beat him up from pillar to post on the first round went into enemy territory Blaine O'Driscoll in the last fight, again, who's a very, very well-rounded, very dangerous guy. He put on a great show and got that rear naked choke finish. And, and this guy, for me, is a guy that he's definitely going to the UFC. If he wins against um, against uh, Shad Chak this, uh, this week, I think he gets the title shot, um, the next title shot. Uh, if he doesn't get signed by someone else, obviously, EFC, Bellator are kind of taking him on for, for one fight at a time. Cage Warriors, obviously, depends what kind of path he goes down. But um, but yeah, if he sticks with cage wise, I think he's uh, he gets the next flyweight title shot. But I guarantee you this person will be in the UFC. I don't say guarantee a lot, but I guarantee you this guy will be in the UFC one day. And soon. I mean, I haven't seen much of him, but I trust John's opinion on him. So yeah, I'll have to look after him. Yeah, nice one. And just before we wrap up, guys, uh, we've gone through all the title fights. We've gone through some of the other fights. We're really excited to see. But, if you had to pick one, what is your must-see fight of the three fights, uh, three fight cards this weekend? I'll let you go first, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Nevaeh Nevaeh versus Jamie Richardson. That's going to be a belter fight. Trust me on that. Yeah, for me, I think uh, the the Natty fight um, against uh, Jamie Richardson. I think that's going to be a banger because you just know, no matter who Natas is fighting, it's always going to be fireworks. He's always going to come out swinging to to take your head off. I think from a technical standpoint, you can't go wrong with Mason Jones against Adam Proctor either. These two guys are, are beautiful technicians, um, beautifully well-rounded. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the kind of fireworks that we see in the, the cast fight. I think it's going to be a more technical chess battle. But um, but for the, those purest MMA fans, that's going to be one hell of a fight as well. Yeah, you two took my, my first pick, which is obviously the, the Natalia Frederick fight. But I've got to say, I am really excited to see the Jack Carter fight. I mean, we saw we could do on the tournament I'm so excited to see him fight I really want to see if Ke- if Kev's right if Kev's going to prove me wrong again and we'll see if he get called to the UFC but what a cracking night of fights we've got Cage Rose 114, 115 and 116 Thursday night Friday night Saturday night all available on UFC Fight Pass the prelims will be shown on Cage Rose's own website so make sure you check those out lads thank you for joining me uh, John is there anyone you want to uh, shout out before we sign off no just as always man just uh, just tip me up on Twitter at MMA and me um Love to talk all things MMA with uh, with anyone who's got an opinion, uh, whether it be good or bad. I'd just like to hear uh, hear what you guys have got to say about the sport. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my boy, Joe Giannetti, for the tea as well, sending it over to the UK. Thanks, Joe. Um, and yeah, just uh, just check out the fights this week. Don't miss any of them, man. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Make sure you check them out because it's going to be awesome. Yeah, Charlie, before we sign off, is anyone you want to give a shout out to? Anyone you say say hi to? Yeah, friends and family, uh, Coach Kev Taylor as well. And uh, my Twitter is Wallace Fire. I'm the same as John. I'm stuck in the lane of stock football as well, anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah, of course, that's it from me. Uh, you can also catch me on Twitter at Cobbly Reporting. Guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to catch up soon. I mean, we've got UFC 253 to look forward to this weekend as well as, as the trilogy. Uh, but, guys, thank you for joining me. I hope you've all enjoyed listening. Make sure to like and subscribe the video. Make sure to share it as well. And, of course, we're going to be back. This is going to be a regular thing now, week, weekly podcast as well. So make sure you keep it new to MMA. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, guys.